the ability to explain things is, is what can set you apart from other actuaries in the field. I know the feedback I get from clients is I will explain something in a, a few sentences and there'll be a pause and then they'll look at me. You know, I understood that better than the last year of explanations I got from the other actuary. And it's not making it complicated. It's, it's, it's understanding it in an, and explaining it in an understandable way. Yeah, you need formulas to check all that and get the actual number, but you have to understand what it's doing. So that's a value as a consultant. Hi, Steve. Thanks so much for being here today and being on my channel. So first, can you share with us about yourself and your career journey? Well, my career journey started as an undergrad. I was taking a statistics course as part of my math degree. I wasn't sure what kind of career a math degree was going to lead to, but my statistics professor said, well, you should look at this actuarial work. Unrelated to that, an uncle of mine was working for an insurance company and said, well, Steve, if you're doing well in math, you should look at this actuarial work. So that's how I wound up starting in actuarial work. I spent about half my career working my way up the corporate ladder in insurance companies. And then I got into consulting partly because an interesting opportunity came along at about the right time. And uh, I've been in consulting since then, but it's been about half and half insurance companies and consulting. Mm, great. So like with many years in the profession, so like what, what is your observation? Like how has the actual profession evolved and what direction do you think it is taking? Yeah. Well, when I started in actuarial work, and this was a long time ago, personal computers didn't exist. Spreadsheets didn't exist. I started writing actuarial programs just because it was easier than trying to do calculations by hand. So what's evolved, one of the things that's evolved over the years is uh, the computers are certainly more powerful. What hasn't changed is what you need is professionals with insights and understanding to explain those results in ways that are useful to people. It's, it's not just a black box, the number is $1,242. People have to understand, well, what is this telling me? Or why is this changing? Or what can I do to change it? What are the levers I can I can pull to manage the situation. That's where actuaries add value. It's not just coming up with a number and saying, there you go, end of story. It's okay, how do, how do I, what do I do with this? How do I, how do I use this information to manage? And uh, that's something that gets lost occasionally in the, on all the calculations, but it's where actuaries are going to add value in ways that uh, the data scientists that you keep hearing about aren't able to. To them, it's just numbers. To an actuary, it's a It's a story and an explanation, and that's where actuaries can add value. Yeah, I totally agree. I think it's really like uh, the knowledge, the expert judgment, the storytelling. And yes, we do need to focus more on the storytelling bit as well. And if we... uh, I think if we are equipped with the keep up to date with like all of the techniques and application and technology changes, like we can focus on where we can uh, deliver the most value for the profession. So in that sense, like what skill sets or knowledge do you believe that the actuary of the future will need to make sure to have? Yeah, well, the actuary of the future has to understand the rules and regulations, the, the principles, the, the actuarial science, as it were. That's, that's a given. Actuaries have to understand what bigger computers and AI and all those things are able to do and what they're not able to do. Uh, As I said a minute ago, the value add is providing insight. Uh, On a related point, my son works in a big company, nothing to do with insurance, nothing to do with actuaries, but his company spends a fortune on AI and they still have data scientists. They still need people to provide the insights that just looking at numbers and getting computer outputs it doesn't provide. And in the insurance slash pension world, I think that's the actuary's job. We understand what's going on. We understand what's driving things. And the value we can add is the insights we, we can get from that insight, from that information. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I, uh, I have another question because I know that like, you have an MBA as an actuary and you have an MBA as well. Like how, how helpful do you think it is for actuaries do have an MBA. Like I myself have one, so and I have different reasons for getting it. So I just wonder like, what are your comments on, on that perspective? Right, well, when I got my MBA, which was a while ago, uh, they weren't terribly common. At that stage in my career, I, I could just see doing nothing but numbers all day, every day. And I wanted to get some broader sense of, uh, of how a company is managed and how a company operates. And the MBA seemed like a good way to do that. 
Now, subsequent to getting that, as I said, I get uh, my first half of my career was spent working up the corporate ladder, working in companies, understanding not just actuarial work, but managing people, managing systems, uh, financial considerations outside of actuarial work. Those, those are all areas where the MBA has come in handy. Uh, in my current consulting work, Again, I can often provide an insight. It's not just numbers. Here's what could be driving it. Sometimes uh, what's driving your actual results is, in fact, a behavioral question. So, okay, you can understand organizational behavior or how people respond to incentives. That's something they teach you in MBA school that is uh, glossed over kind of quickly in actuarial work. Uh, additionally, having worked in company management, uh, I've got, uh, I was a CFO at one point of a fairly large organization. We got a pretty good understanding of financial statements where many actuaries, unfortunately, get a little lost outside of the traditional actuarial stuff. So it's, it's a broader skill set. It's a different skill set. It's partly a function of what type of work you want to do. But in my case, it's it served well uh, for what I was trying to do at the time. And then many years later, even when I'm in supposedly pure actuarial consulting work, it gives me insights that uh, are often lacking from other sources. So uh, it's certainly a useful addition, whether it's uh, necessarily what everybody wants to do. That, that's a personal choice. But if, if you're doing those sorts of things, it's a useful asset to have. Yeah, I agree as well. <laughs> that's why I also did the MBA myself for more uh, to like enhance the business mindset and having like the broader view of uh, management and operations of the company and everything. Yeah. So you have various experiences like with uh, consulting actual work in like life insurance valuation, pricing, stochastic modeling, and then also expert witness. So I'm very interested to know more about the expert <coughs> witness. Uh, so can you share more about the work involved? Like what do actuaries do in this field? Yeah, well, there's a few kinds of expert witness work. Two of the big court cases I got involved in testifying about involved insurance companies. And the expertise I brought to the expert witness work was my expertise as an insurance actuary. So in one case, uh, a large block of policyholders felt they had been deprived of appropriate demutualization benefits when one of the big insurance companies demutualized. I wrote a fairly long-winded report explaining uh, prior policyholder surplus, shareholder rights, policyholder rights, and so on, uh, and explaining that in a way that a judge and uh, could understand it. That was one case. Another case was a little more down to earth. It was the case was basically whether the insurance company had produced deliberately misleading sales illustrations or whether they'd simply made a mistake. And it was a factor of five in how much uh, death benefit the insured was going to get. So that was that was kind of a big ticket item. I'm working on a case right now where the question is: Can we statistically prove that there's been uh, discrimination in the promotion practices of an employer? And the answer is you can sure run statistics on that, and uh, it provides some surprising surprising insights. Then you get into a relatively routine work. Uh, you, you do criminal interest rates, fair value of insurance policy calculations. Those are those are pretty straightforward, and I've never actually been in court over one of those, but it, it's steady work churning over courts and that sort of stuff. Mm, thanks for sharing. Like, uh, they sound interesting, and like it seems like uh, different cases would have well, different... <laughs> Well, here's a, here's, a, here's a truly different one. I was uh, hired by one of the uh, government crop insurance programs to run a stochastic model. And I produced, I'm not kidding, a 52-page report on different ways to calculate averages. <laughs> I, I thought, surely I've misunderstood the question here. No, that was what they wanted, a 52-page report on different ways to calculate averages. And uh, that's, uh, that's truly an exercise in creative thinking. And writing. Wow, um, that that is an experience. <laughs> it was. <laughs> yeah. Well, if they find it uh, worthy and they are willing to pay for it, then uh, and you able to deliver it, then yeah, <laughs> that's all right. It was. It was unique. Uh, <laughs> no one's asked me to do that again. So. <laughs> So you are very active in like volunteering with various actual organizations. So uh, why do you decide to volunteer in the first place? And uh, has that benefit your own professional or personal growth? 
Yeah, well, I volunteered for a few reasons, one of which was when somebody called and asked, I, I had trouble saying no. Uh, but it, it helps It helps you grow in the profession. It also helps your resume. So, for instance, the initial volunteer work I did was uh, grading actuarial exams, and that progressed to setting the questions in the exams in the first place. And when I started complaining about, you know, some of the study material is, is truly atrocious, the uh, E&E committee said, well, okay, you write some. And I did. And uh, so I wrote study notes on things like uh, government regulations affecting the marketing of life insurance, uh, stuff like that, where, where the existing actuarial material just didn't explain it very well. Uh, moving up from there, when the committees were being formed to set the new rules about uh, the Insurance Companies Act coming in in 91 and the new role of the newly created role of the appointed actuary, I wanted to get involved because it was interesting and because it was useful to have a say in how the rules are created. And I was delighted to discover that uh, just you get at the table and say something that makes sense, people will listen, which of course encourages you to, to come back and do more. There was a committee on MBA credits and whether MBA credits should be granted towards actuarial work. Since at the time I was one of the few actuaries that had an MBA, I was asked to chair that committee. Uh, looks good on the resume. Uh, and other topics have come up. Uh, sometimes I volunteer based on the topic. Sometimes people call me and say, Steve, we think you'd be a good addition to this committee. He said, I have, I have trouble saying no to professional volunteer requests. But it looks good on a resume, to be, to be blunt about it. If somebody, whether you're applying for a job or, or whether you're a consultant applying for an assignment, first question is, so what else have you done? And if you can say, well, I was on several of these committees that shaped the rules that run the profession or the industry. That's a that's a better story than well I, yeah I've read all the notes the same way everybody else has so you know it's I don't mean it to be entirely self serving but it helps the profession it helps you grow as a profession to understand the issues and, and it helps your career a bit in terms of you can say it's stuff you've done yeah it definitely can give you a broader exposures of different topics and stuff that you may not be able to get it uh, at work yeah so I totally can see that as well. So, and lastly, uh, what advice do you have for aspiring actuaries, especially for those like who are interested in being in consulting? Yeah, well, as I said a couple of times in earlier comments, uh, the ability to explain things is, is what can set you apart from other actuaries in the field. I know the feedback I get from clients is I will explain something in a, a few sentences and there'll be a pause and then they'll look at me. You know, I understood that better than the last year of explanations I got from the other actuary. And it's not making it complicated. It's it's, it's understanding it in an, and explaining it in an understandable way. Yeah, you need formulas to check all that and get the actual number, but you have to understand what it's doing. So that's a value as a consultant. But a second point of this uh, uh, causal analysis, if you want to call it that, is it gives you some sense of sanity check on results. Okay, well, if this went up, then that has to go down. It didn't. Well, why didn't it? Something, Something's wrong somewhere. Or, gee, this can't possibly be bigger than 12%, yet uh, our number's coming back at 15. Well, okay, we missed something somewhere. It's, it's a useful sanity check in what is otherwise just an endless mass of calculations. And it's a useful skill to understand, explain the result to people. Uh, so I would say focus on that. Everybody's going to study the notes. Everybody's going to know the techniques. Everybody's going to know the software. What can set an actuary apart is the ability to explain it in a way that other people can understand. Absolutely. And I still find that is the one of the hardest things to achieve and to like keep continue to improve the communication or just like the ability to explain, to communicate at different levels of audiences. Yeah. Well, this was uh, drilled into me early in my career by a guy named Bill Black, who's retired now. But th this opened my eyes early in my career. We just recite formulas and we'll go through algebra and he would turn it into words. And, and uh, it was an insight to me. I was not at the time I couldn't do that. And I could see that clearly it was useful. You got to work at it, but uh, it's, it's a very useful skill. Mm. I hope uh, many years from now, I will be able to communicate uh, and uh, speak like you. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, you, you get uh, you get cross benefits. For part of my career, I was a marketing VP. Almost mm -hmm. my half of my job was going around giving presentations of one sort or another. So <laughs> you get a lot of practice giving presentations. That's a useful skill, something many, many actuaries don't develop. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And 
as you say, practice uh, will make improvement. <laughs> practice certainly helps. Now, thank you so much, Steve, for being here today and sharing with us about your career journey and uh, all of the insights. Thanks, Steve. My pleasure.